Hi, my name is John Humanic. Welcome to my channel. I'm so excited for you here today because I've got a message that's gonna blow your mind. Today's topic is how do you call out your inner profit? Meaning, how do you know that you're a profit and then how does that come into being? Because this is a very important topic because there are so many religious people out there that talk about how a prophet should come into authority, power, and dominion. But the Bible says the way it's done is completely different than the way man has been doing it. And I can assure you, when you start to see the scriptures, as I'm about to show you today, it's going to open your hearts and your minds to receive those things to call out that inner prophet in an amazing way. So stick around for this whole video. It's going to be great. Now, what is a prophet? If you're not familiar with the prophetic or different things, you'll start to understand if you're coming from a secular background, because you may have seen people in the prophetic operating in worldly ways, such as a psychic, a palm reader, a mind reader. You may have heard it saying, hey, there's a woman intuition or a guy's gut feel. The prophetic is the ability to call the future into the present using the words of the prophet. It's done through edification, exhortation, and comfort. It's done through the eyes of the Father, through the heart of of Jesus Christ. It's all about being able to lift up a people and call them forward to reveal something that they may not understand, to pull them out of a situation that they're currently in, to break them out of a season into a new one. That's the essence of a prophet. In the context of the church, the prophet is really one of the guardians of the church, much like uh, the, when you look at the fivefold ministry. The inward facing aspects are like the pastors. Pastors are shepherding people that oversee a church and take care of its people. But the prophet is the one group of people, especially if you have a council that protects the church from the church because Satan's going to send wolves into the church and it's the job of the prophets to discern who they are and call them out and if possible, bring them to repentance and be able to heal them on that journey because it's not always about kicking them out. So how do you know you're a prophet? How do you call out your inner prophet? So this is really important because those who prophesy are not always called to be prophets, but those who are called to prophets always prophesy. So let me say this another way so that you can understand it, because if you're not flowing in the prophetic or you're not really sure, that may sound a bit confusing. So in the Bible, the spirit of prophecy is, as described in Revelation, is, is this the testimony of Jesus Christ. And so it means anytime you share a Bible verse, you're actually prophesying in its, in its most raw and basic form. That's the spirit of prophecy. The, the next level up from that, and anyone can do that, the next level up from that is being a prophet. But the reality is, is what people don't recognize is, is that your metron or your sphere of influence in which you're allowed to prophesy, guess what? It's just you. And so certain prophets never come out of this phase because if you do try to come and move up to the higher level, such as the office of the prophet when you're operating within a, a five-fold church or the prophet to the nations, if you move through those levels too quickly, what will end up happening is you prophesy out of an orphan spirit and you're rushing the process and the words you speak will actually end up being more condemning or not received properly. So don't rush this process, but the way you can recognize recognize that you're a prophet versus who someone who just prophesies is the fact is, is that will be a part of your core being. It'll be a part of your daily walk. It'll be a part of the things that you do. Prophecy falls under the gifts of revelation as described by the, the gifts the Holy Spirit gives out. And so there's three major ones, wisdom, knowledge, and prophecy. And you'll know when you're a prophet because the reality is, is one way is you just know things before they happen. I mean, that sounds oversimplistic, but that's the reality is you just know. I remember growing up, I would know the ending of movies before they happened. I would be able to tell people conversations that they had behind closed doors. It's what it is. It's revelation. It's knowing something that you would otherwise not be possibly known through the faculties, the five senses, or, or any things you could study in a book. It's just knowing something beyond your capacity to know, and it ends up being true. This is a core aspect of the prophetic. It happens with all prophetic people at different levels. And so what you start to understand is, is you start to know things that you would otherwise not know, whether it's wisdom, which is how to do something, which is knowledge, which is what something is, or, you know, in this context, prophecy, which is pulling things 
in the future forward because it's so much more than just having a vision and understanding, hey, this is what my future is like. I feel like this is what God has on me. No, what it means is, is that you can see that these things need to happen and you literally call them into being. You're pulling them down from heaven onto earth in a powerful way. So when you start to understand is how do you know that you are a prophet or a prophetess of the Lord, It all it's all about this awareness, this supernatural awareness that's blessed and powered by the Holy Spirit spirit that you're aware. This is why the gifts are given without repentance. This is why psychics can be very powerful because ultimately a true psychic is really just a prophet who has just who are, is operating out of the wrong spirit. So the devil will use prophetic people for his gain, but they'll think it's for their gain. That's the essence of how the psychics work because they'll come in and they'll start asking people questions or they'll just start discerning things in the spirit realm. And because the gifting is there and the Holy Spirit's not going to take it away from them, because again, the gifts are irrevocable, that's Bible. What will happen is, is they start to know things about people that they would otherwise not know. And it's not necessarily as full birth as someone who's operating and flowing with the Holy Spirit, but again, it's real and it happens. And so when you start to see these things, these areas where people know stuff, and if you're one of them, that's the aspect of, hey, maybe I am called to the prophetic. Maybe I do start to see the things before they happen. Maybe I understand things that other people don't understand. That's all core fundamental aspects of how prophets work. And so what the thing is, is that you should understand is, is it's really important to steward that gift because the gift of prophecy by definition, is the most powerful gift God gives. It's the only one listed in the gifts of the Father, the gifts of the Son, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And it's the only one that can work day in and day out relentlessly. Now, one might argue that the gift of faith and the gift of healing can be more powerful, and we can definitely have that conversation. But the reality is, is guess what? Even though you might be walking in faith every day, and even though you may see someone get radically healed and transform their life, the gift of prophecy is so so much more powerful than both because it operates all the time and it doesn't have a limit. In fact, it's so powerful that it can shift literally the world. And you see this in the stories of Elijah and Elisha. You see this in the prophets and all the things like the prophets are so powerful. They were the most sought after people on the planet and they were also the most hunted because they were the ones that were wrecking the plans of the enemy over and over again. And which is the difference between faith and, and healing because faith and healing are primarily inward things, even though they may apply to other people where prophecy is so powerful, it affects the world. And that's the essence of what it is. So it's extremely important as you start to understand and recognize to call out your inner prophet, the key part about it is, is to recognize that, hey, this is a journey and you do need to take it at the pace that God wants you to. Because if you rush it, you're going to be prophesying, as I said earlier, through an orphan spirit or something out of some form of harm. And your words hit so much harder than the regular Christian does. And again, that's not a knock on the Christians that, that don't have the prophetic gift. Everyone has their power gifts, but the reality is, is the prophetic is just that. I have known prophets who have spoken words and people have died afterwards. Like that's the power of the prophecies, the prophetic, the words you speak, they have that weight. You see this even when Jesus, when he speaks to the fig tree and he curses it and then it dies. Like that's the essence. The, we know that life and death is in the power of the tongue, but the weight of the prophet, the weight of the prophet is, is just harder. You could see it. A lot of them even end up in sales positions because they have the ability to speak into a situation and just basically get people to just come into agreement with them. And then they shift. They become very successful salespeople. They become very successful leaders because they are just constantly commanding people and giving them authority and edifying them and encouraging them and moving them forward. And the greatest of leaders could be prophets. And I mean, they also could be pastors because they're shepherding. But at the end of the day, the prophetic operates in authority and power that just the other gifts just don't because it's meant to be that way for the time that God allows it to operate. So I want to encourage you today as you're on this journey, as you're starting to seek things out, it's important to find other resources. We have a school of prophecy known as David's and Deborah's that you, you're able to join. It's on our website. You can find it there.
There are other prophetic resources out there like Prophet Rob Sanchez, who's my mentor, just an absolute incredible man of God. Uh, there's Jennifer Ives, Jennifer LeClaire, uh, there's Jonathan Kahn. There's a lot of great prophets today that are just available to just get into their schools, read their books, read the materials that they have, and just be blessed in an amazing way. It's very powerful because what they're doing is moving things forward, especially Jennifer LeClaire, because her, her ministry is just next level and just has tons of materials, especially if you feel like you're a prophetess of the Lord and you're looking for a woman of God to follow, her stuff is just next level. She really does have an amazing gifting in this space. And so I encourage you today to search out and sit with the Holy Spirit. You can just ask him at the end of the day, am I a prophet? Am I a prophetess of the Lord? And he'll tell you. He will, he will happily tell you if that's the gifting that needs to be activated on your life at this time, because everyone's born with it, but whether or not it's active in their life, uh, once it's active, it's, it's going, and technically it is active the whole time, but when you become, that's a part of your identity publicly, that's when the Holy Spirit will reveal it, because God calls the prophets first. Now, this is a part where a lot of religious people will get caught up in some things, because they're going to talk about that everyone has to be commissioned into a church. So in the Bible, in the New Testament, because a lot of the things we focus on in the, on this age, we talk about what happened after Jesus's death and resurrection. How did they operate? Well, well, first off, there isn't a single prophet that was commissioned into the church documented in the New Testament. Well, why is that? You saw all the apostles were commissioned. Every single one had hands laid on them and they were commissioned, but the Holy Spirit started it. So the way the way the church works is, is you got to have an ordained, commissioned apostle who's then blessed by God to go forward. It starts with God, then goes with man, and off they go. And then you start to see the fivefold. We're like, well, do you have to be commissioned in the in the church to operate in the church? In the context of the office of the prophet, absolutely. You're not allowed to go into a church under the uh, under a pastor and then speak words of anything unless you've been authorized to do that because God is a God of order. It's just reality. So when you look at the spectrum of the prophets, you got the spirit of prophecy, which anyone can operate in any time because you're just writing a Bible verse on a, you know, maybe a restaurant receipt or you're speaking it out loud and sharing the word of God. Maybe it's a shirt you're wearing or a hat. Everyone can operate that. There's no limit, no restriction. When you're a prophet to the Lord, you're really a prophet to yourself, maybe even your family, but that's the sphere that you're going to operate in. God may move you beyond that sphere, but that's the sphere, and you can operate only by being ordained by God. You don't have to have hands laid on you by man. When you come into a church, yes, you're going to have to have someone in authority in the church lay hands on you to allow you to prophesy to the space, because the reality is, is guess what? And this is why it's not prevalent in churches today, is the prophets rank higher than the pastors. And so when you really Really, truly have a pastor who's humble, they're going to have a council of prophets operating in their church because they, the pastors, have to yield to the words of the prophets. That's how it works. And really what you're doing is, is you're going to have a full five-fold ministry there where you're going to have an apostle, ap apostolic group that sits on top that are, are attached to the prophets, that are attached to the evangelist, they're attached to the pastors, then they're attached to the teachers. And so a lot of people don't like operating like that way because they don't want to be told what to do. But Unfortunately, that's not how the church is designed and defined in the Bible. The last one, which there has never been an ordained by man, an ordained prophet, is the prophet to the nations. Every single prophet to the nations that's been described in the Bible, or at least operated in that, in that way, was 100% commissioned by God, and that's it. And so as you're moving in the prophetic and you understand your calling and God's blessing you, search out a great mentor, sit under them, make sure you understand your giftings and where their graces are supposed to be. Because if you don't, you're going to start being in places you're not going to be, you're going to say things you're not supposed to say, and it's just not going to be good for you or for them. But when you are blessed and you sit under a man or woman of God, or even both, you're going to be able to move forward. God's going to be able to use you in amazing and exciting ways, and it will transform your life. It'll transform everyone's life around you. Remember, your first ministry is to yourself and your family, so they should be blessed beyond belief by the words you're speaking, and then it overflows elsewhere. And when it overflows, it's going to overflow in abundance, and it's all about, as it's talked about in the Bible, it's all about 
1 Corinthians chapter 14. If you want to know the, the scriptures that talk about prophecy, you'll see edification, exhortation, or comfort. It's all about pulling a person up and out of the, the darkness that they're in or up and out through the situation they're going through, or even just revealing something that they don't see. And that's the essence of prophecy. And if you'd continue to do that within your life and you haven't recognized that, I can assure you that's the gifting you've got. And God's going to use you in mighty ways to shift the, the alignment back into his will. The world will move and worship and praise him. It'll be incredible. You'll be edifying. And at the end of the day, I'll leave you with this. Just trust the words that come out of your mouth. Because when you start to prophesy, every prophet and prophetess gets concerned, is this really God? And if you do it from a heart of love and you back it with a Bible verse, you will never be wrong. It's impossible because you have the Bible backing you. And so just trust in the Lord. Let the people receive it. Let it be done through love and grace. And don't let man stop you from moving forward because the devil will use even good people to come against you to try to stop the prophetic voice because the prophetic voice, again, is the most powerful gifting in the kingdom of God. And there's nothing that wrecks the kingdom of darkness more than a holy voice speaking the word of the Lord. Thank you for watching this video. If you found this content edifying, I'd have you prayerfully consider becoming a partner with this ministry. You can go to our Patreon site in the description or search John Humanic on their website. There you can sign up and all Destiny Impact partners receive a free book and everyone enjoys many more benefits helping us spread the gospel to the whole world. God bless.